In this presentation, we're going to continue on with non-parametric statistics. Now, this is part B of a presentation where a psychologist is uh, investigating oral and visual memory. Okay, so this is the second part. In the first part, we essentially had a look at the sign test. So we're going to go on and have a look at another procedure here uh, shortly. So let's read the question. After completing this experiment, the psychologist decides to investigate whether the oral memory scores can be improved by coaching. A second experiment is conducted, the first one being in part A of the question, in which a random sample of 12 students performs an oral memory test before and after several sessions of coaching in skills believed to aid oral memory. And here are the two tests. So this is the before and after, so it's paired data here. So an improvement here and an improvement here goes down here, that's a negative, okay, and so on. Now, what I'll, you'll notice is that for most of them, most of the uh, students here, that they do have small increases or small decreases, but there are some very big jumps here. This is plus 24 and plus 15, whereas we're going very small jumps elsewhere, okay? So essentially what we're thinking here is the data is going to be very skewed, okay? So anyway, let's read the question. It is uh, required to test uh, whether oral memory is improved using a non-parametric test. Explain why it's not satisfactory to use a test similar to the one in part A, which is the sign test. Carry out an appropriate non-parametric test, okay? And it would be it is suggested that non-parametric tests will be would be appropriate, more appropriate to analyze the data without analysis, without analyzing the, without, sorry, performing the analysis, state which test you would assume and any assumptions necessary for this analysis to be valid. And would these assumptions be reasonable in this case? Okay. Whoops. I'm going a bit crazy there with that thing. So let's go down. So I just paused it and unpaused it. So I'm just back now. So. Essentially, what we did in part A was the sign test. And essentially, it was the sign test actually was sort of based on categories, A or B, plus or minus, uh, binomial categories. It is not very powerful. And uh, particularly the sample size here, now the sample size being referring to part A, which is 10, uh, not 12 here in part B, is not large enough to make for effective use. It's not large enough to make inferences around the population, uh, general population, okay? So the data provides information, and this is part B now, and this should we say provides, I apologize, uh, information which the sign test would not use, namely measuring the change of on a numeric scale, okay? This is now talking about part B here, okay? And essentially what we ha are discussing here is these differences here. So 13 to, sorry, 39 to uh, 63 that's a difference of 24 okay this is a difference of plus 5 minus 1 this these are important pieces of information okay that the sign test doesn't use but we try and use a test that is as powerful and uses as much of the information as possible okay so in this case what we're going to use here is as well as the sign of the change we're going to use the magnitude and so this is what we're going to use this is the basis of this presentation really a Wilcoxon signed rank test is suitable here okay so just based on the data before I actually should have included uh, the raw data but it's up there so this is five and six this is like 39 to 63 and that's a, plus, a difference of plus 24 so essentially what I've done here is I've just uh, I'll just do one or two here Seven, that's plus seven, minus two, plus six, plus four, plus 24, and so on, right down to the end, okay? Uh, so here I am again, and uh, that's just picking up where I left off the last one, okay? Now, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to sort of uh, highlight where we have negative signs, negative differences here. Okay, so here we have three negative differences. Okay, 
and the rest are all positive differences uh, from after okay so now what I'm going to do here also is I'm going to get the absolute value of these differences okay so just disregard the sign that's the absolute value sign of the difference there okay so they're yeah now what I will also do here is I will rank them okay now this actually requires a little bit of number crunching for example we got two differences of one and one okay absolute differences actually I should say here and here and we got a couple of we've only got one situation where there's a difference of two an absolute difference of two which is here and work through it the whole way through okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rank these differences and in the case of draws or ties I will just give them the average of the two rankings so let's just say I have a rank uh, these are my first and second jointly so what I'm going to do there is both give them a rank of one and a half okay one and a half being the average of one and two seeing as these are the top two okay then I'm going to go to the third ranking value here which is three and so on and work the whole way through four this is the fourth highest rank fifth highest rank uh, sixth and seventh eighth uh, we have a ninth and a tenth there or sorry a nine and ten we have a tie there uh, for positions nine and ten so we give them both nine and a half and then eleven and twelve okay so so we rank them up like that and you notice actually we start from the lowest difference upwards okay that's an important little remark there we start from the lowest difference upwards and work up so the lowest difference there in terms of absolute difference is one and one okay now so what we're going to do here now is we're going to remember which of our differences were negative these ones here okay so let's check out the corresponding ranks six and a half nine and a half and one and a half okay three plus six and a half plus nine and a half plus one and a half those are the sums of the ranks for the negative differences okay when we look at the absolute differences there okay so that's important what does that work out to be 20.5 okay now if you to do for the positive ranks as well it should work out to be 57.5 or 57 and a half okay so sorry the null hypothesis is that the arrow memory scores are not altered by coaching the alternative hypothesis as they are uh, improved by coaching and a one test a one-sided test is required now i actually made mention of this previously and it's really in part a but it was Part B it was where I really wanted to talk about it because this is relevant for when we use the tables. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is we're going we're, we would work out both of these values here, um, and essentially essentially what I do there is go through the whole thing again just to be doubly sure. Uh, we would work out nine and a half. We work out these ones here. Okay. Nine and a half plus eight plus five plus twelve, and so on, and that would give us fifty-seven point uh, fifty-seven and a half. Okay, so you just pick out which of those two values is the lower of the two, the minimum of the two, and in that case, it is twenty and a half. Okay, now we're going to the tables here. So n equal to twelve gives seventeen as a critical value for a one-sided five percent significance test. Now this is important here. So the tables should look like this. Now, these are two-sided tables, okay? And we're doing an, a one-sided test for 5% significance level, okay? But these tables here are two-sided tables. So what we do here is we actually would go to 
this t column here, okay, the 10% column, okay, and here it is. So our critical value there is 17, okay. So essentially, why do we go to the 10% one? It's 5% for each tail. So it, it so it's 10% over two tails, 5% for each tail. And we're dealing with a one-sided test, so this gives us the value that we are looking for, the critical value that we're looking for, which is 17. Okay. So, tables for n equals 12 gives 17 as critical value for a one-sided 5% test. Uh, so, in this case, the test statistic has to be less than 17. So in this case, there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Now, so the another the other question was actually related to pair sample t test using using the differences would be appropriate if the distribution appeared to be approximately normally distributed. But that actually was unlikely. We looked like yeah, we have two very high values on the same side and it essentially looked a bit skewed so it didn't look like a good choice to use the to, uh, so we had two values that really skewed it um skewed the distribution okay so that would really undermine our the uh, the assumption of normality although the fact is the t-test is actually quite robust to this but essentially what we're here to do is learn about non-parametric tests so anyway, we'll leave it there.